specific deck that you know what you're going to do with. Say, for example, um, I played recently a combo rogue deck. I don't think that would have gone up before this, but there's very specific things that deck is doing and uh, cards you need to draw. If I have five extra random legendaries in there, which may do absolutely nothing for uh, my deck, I could be drawing through them instead of the cards I actually need. So in that way, it could end you. However, you bet I'm going to play this card because who doesn't want five extra legendaries? Also, we're not talking that it's replacing your cards like the Golden Monkey. It's giving you five extra cards. Imagine you get five extra Sylvanas in your deck or five Insoths or, you know, it's just crazy, okay? Five Deathwings. And it's not obviously not specifically doesn't say you can't get more than one of the same minion. It doesn't say that you won't either, so I'm not sure how that will work, but that's pretty good. Play that in a uh, warlock deck, demon deck. Yep, you bet I will be doing that uh, when that card plays. You will see that card played a lot, I think. And a 5 6 for 5 is not the worst either. Like, I feel they could have made that like a 1-1 one, one, and people would still play it. But, there you go. Um, right, next up, we've got the 4 cost, 3-4 Barnes. Um, Barnes' is battle cry is summon a 1-1 one, one copy of a random minion in your deck. Uh, I quite like it. shadow cast with rogue where you can specifically play it and then choose what you want to copy and make the one one of so if you wanted to do a reno or something like that you can copy it or your sarah or something like that you copy it random isn't so good but a three four for four just for the fun factor also double it up with the bronze bond bronze beard you get two one ones of that minion that's pretty good um so yeah, but I guess it's very situational though. As I say, summon a one-one copy of a random minion in your deck. That could be like thirty cards, um, not thirty, but it would be like you know potentially like twenty cards to choose from. This is really random. <laughs> um, next up, we have the three crossed morose. Uh, this has stealth, and at the end of your turn, you summon a one-one steward. He's a 3 cost 1-1 one, one himself, so he has stealth, and then he's kind of like the, um, what's it called, the imp, um, you know, the imp lady, <laughs> I can't even remember her name now, where at the end of each turn she loses one life, but she summons uh, an imp, a 1-1 one, one imp, it's like that, but he doesn't lose any life, obviously super susceptible to AoE, um, and not much good for else, but maybe if you're playing like a zoo deck and you wanted that constant board presence even if it's a 1-1 one, one, you might be interested in it or maybe even like a paladin um, like one of those divine shield um, decks where when you summon a 1-1 one, one, it gives it divine shield straight away something like that would work really well with it I guess um, I like the artwork as well I think it looks pretty cool the rose um, so yeah they are legendaries you get um, they're pretty cool some really really interesting ones there but um, certainly Prince Malgazar I think is the one which you will see a lot of play from and uh, but also Medivh I'm excited for the curator I think could be quite good Barnes I'm not really so sure on and Morose I don't really play that type of deck that would possibly benefit from that but I could see the synergies there where it would work for sure so we'll see I guess um, next up we have the uh, so these are neutral cards but they're non-legendary we have the arcane giant which is a 12 cost 8-8 eight, eight, uh, card it costs 1 less for each spell you've cast this game so potentially really really super cool for something like a um, uh, 
yoga deck where it's very spell heavy you can get this guy down super cheap you know by late game late game and um you know maybe in the hunter yoga deck something like you're on turn 10 you play call the wild and because you've played so many uh, spells this guy and it costs two it's not inconceivable by turn 10 you would have played 10 spells especially within a hunter deck um you know drop this guy with two as well suddenly you've got a really stacked board um yeah i like this card it's another one of the giants which always cost less uh 12 mana i'm thinking that seems a little bit cheap though uh as in they probably could have made it 15 and it would still get quite good use but we'll see i guess you don't really know till you're actually playing it in there. but certainly if this thing gets if you've played seven spells and it gets down to five costs that's pretty good value for an 8-8 you know, five six uh, seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. So yeah, I like that card. Interesting though. I think it's not a mech. I would imagine it would have been a mech. It kind of looks a bit mechy, but maybe that would have made it a little bit too synergistic with mech decks and things like that. So understandable. You know, couple couple uh, couple it with a mech warper or something like that, and uh, maybe it's a bit too bad. Next up, we have. Six cost bookworm. Uh, it's a three six dragon. It's battle cries. If you're holding a dragon, destroy an enemy minion with three attack or less. Uh, pretty cool, especially for people who play dragon decks. Um, I watch a lot of Brian Gibbler, who's a really great streamer and uh, of Hearthstone, and he also plays Magic the Gathering and Duelist. Um, and uh, he loves his dragon. is that they tend to be very expensive um, in terms of the cards you have um, a lot of them rely on really good legendaries which I don't have uh, so um, I don't often get to play them otherwise I would because they're super good fun um, but yeah I like this you know you're holding a dragon you drop this on the board you get a 3-6 for 6 which is not terrible but it also just gets rid of um, you know something annoying on your, on your, your opponent's board you know especially if they're I don't know, maybe a zoo or something like that. It could be good. I don't know if it will get played. I don't know enough about Dragon Decks to know if this would warrant a space in there. Um, maybe just for fun. I mean, look at him. He looks cool. Uh, so next up, we have the six cost Moat Lurker. It's Battle Cry. It's a 3 3, sorry. It's Battle Cry. It's Destroy a Minion. It's Death Rattle. We summon. Interesting. Um, interesting. I guess for something just got a good death rattle, you could chuck it down, kill it, and then, or if something was very damaged, you could chuck it down, kill it, and then you resummon it at full health, I guess. Um, or maybe you, it's late game. I, I'm assuming here when it says destroy minions. It's not saying random, so you get to choose. Uh, so you, maybe your opponent's just dropped something really big, and you just want to get rid of it. So you just drop this down and uh, get rid of it until this thing dies. And, you know, obviously you try to not get it killed, and then you try and finish off your opponent before he kills your moat lurk and resummons his thing. So I guess it's got that kind of dual uh, usage there. But a six cost three three is super expensive. Um, again, it'd have to be a very specific deck, I think, you played this in. But we'll see. Someone will probably make a super cool one out there. Next up, we have the Avian Watcher. Uh, this is a 5 cost, 3, 6. It's a battle cry if you control a secret, gain plus 1, plus 1, and Daunt. So potentially what you get is a 4, 7 for 5 with Daunt, which is good. That's, that's good stats. Um, was not so great as a 3-6 for 5 uh, but certainly if I was I, also I would like it would be great if this was a beast then you, you have played in hunter decks for sure but it isn't so 
plus two plus two. That's pretty good. Um, it would be it would have been slightly cooler if it was like for every secret you control, gain plus one plus one. That would have been pretty cool, but perhaps a bit overpowered. Uh, next up, we have the five cost menagerie magician. It's a four four. It's battle cry. Give a random friendly beast, dragon, and murloc a plus two plus two. So as I said earlier, when we had the curator, um, this synergizes with that. So the curator allows you to draw those cards. You can then play them, drop this down the next turn. You give them all plus two, plus two. For a five cost four, four, which is not the worst stats. It's not great, but it's, there's so many worse out there. And if it's giving you stuff, plus two, plus two, that's pretty darn good. Um, so I think there's going to be some really interesting decks built around these cards. Um, I can't wait to see them. Uh, next up we have the four cost Arcano Smith 3 2 um, card. Battle Cry Summon at 0 5 Minion Vidaunt. So it's kind of like a mirror image spell ish. Again, chuck this down with Bran. If you get 2 0 5s with Taunt, that's a pretty good Taunt ball. Pretty annoying for your opponent. Um, a 3 2 is not the worst in the it's just one of those ones and also I was thinking with this as well say like a priest deck um, in a fire divine spirit you've got a 10-10 uh, on turn 6 I guess it's pretty good um, next up we have the 3 cost of violent illusionist uh, so this seems very powerful during your turn your hero is immune Four, three. So every time your hero attacks, it doesn't take any damage. I could see this getting played in like warrior decks, big time. Just smashing everything up. Uh, perhaps even like a shaman deck with doom hammer. Just keep smashing things, uh, and you're taking zero damage. So pretty, yeah, pretty good. And a four three is actually really good stats for uh, three cost cards. So. I could see that getting played a lot. I think personally anyway. I could be completely wrong. But I definitely think there's something you could you could build a weapon um, based deck around that. Uh, and it'd be pretty good. Next up we have the three cost Zubot. I love the look of this card. I love the cute little creatures in it. It's one of my favourite card arts I think. Um, within the, uh, the adventure. So the Zubot, it's got a battle cry, give a random friendly beast, a dragon, a murloc, or plus one, plus one. So we see that synergy there with the beast, a dragon, a murloc. It's a mech, and it's a 3-3 three, three for three, which is not the worst we'll ever see. Um, but again, interesting synergies there. I uh, like it, actually. I'm hoping there's going to be a cool deck built around the Zubot, the Menagerie Magician, and the Curator. Um, I think there will be. It might be totally rubbish, but I think it'll be fun. Um, next up, we have the Pantry Spider. Um, it's a 3 cost 1 3, but it's Battle Cry Summon a 1 3 Spider. It's a beast as well, so I can see this game played in Hunter or Druid. Um, not bad, I guess. You've got two 1 3s for 3, which is potentially 2 6, I guess. If you played it with um, Bran, you're getting three one threes for three, which is super value. Um, I quite like it actually. Um, I'd probably play it in a specific deck. I don't think I'd play it in, like my Yog Hunter, but uh, I think a specific kind of deck you could you could see some good usage out of that. It's not a game changer, but it certainly would be an annoyance, I guess. Next up we have the Nether Spite Historian, a 2 cost 1-3, it's battle cry if you're holding a dragon, discover a dragon, I like this card a lot, uh, if you're playing a dragon deck, that's flipping brilliant isn't it, <laughs> uh, drop that down and get another dragon, drop another one down get another dragon, drop it down with Brands from Beard, get two dragons, as long as you're holding a dragon obviously, and it's only two mana, and a 1-3 and 2 cost is not 
terrible. It's not good, but it's not terrible. Um, so yeah, I like it. Um, next up, we have the lower cost car seat. You see, we've worked down through to the lowest cost type cards. Um, the pompous thespian. Uh, a two cost three two retort. Not that exciting. I like the way he has got the Inua Bonds uh, head in his hand though, a la Hamlet. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, but I don't really have much to say on that card, it's just, it is what it is, isn't it? Uh, next up we have the one cast Arcane Anomaly. Whenever you cast a spell, give this minion plus one health. It's like a reverse Mana Worm, isn't it? But it's got one less attack, if you think about it. The Mana Worm's a 1-3. Uh, this is 2-1. Um, could be pretty cool. Drop this down. Coin. Um, arcane missile. If you're a mage, suddenly you've got a 2-3. A and you've done damage to your opponent. That's pretty cool, I think. Um, next up, we've got the Runic Egg. Uh, it's a 1 cost card. It's a 0-2. It's death rattle and draw a card. I don't know if I like this card. Uh, it just seems pretty pointless, doesn't it? Does it? Is it just me? I get it. I guess if you're really after card draw, like you can do that. But I don't know. I guess there's lots of synergies out there you can do with it. You can buff it up. You can taunt it. You can do all sorts with it. I guess so. It's not the end of the world. Plus, you get that card at the end of it, so it cycles through, and it's only one cost. I still don't really like it though, to be honest. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see a cool deck based around it. So that is the one night in Karazhan neutral cards. We have gone through in part one and part two all 45 of this new adventure, or 45 cards from this new adventure, uh, which looks super fun. It comes out August the 11th, so very, very shortly. Um, this is what's going to go up on Wednesday, so it's like the day after, basically, uh, just to get you all hyped. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. Obviously going to be doing videos on it. Um, and if you enjoyed these videos, then check back and see some more good stuff. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll check you out next time.